In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase to bite the dust. When we say something is going to bite the dust, it means it's going to stop working. Maybe you have a computer and it's really, really old. You could say to someone, I need to buy a new computer because this computer is going to bite the dust. That means someday in the near future, you're going to want to use your computer and maybe it won't turn on or maybe you'll be in the middle of something important and all of a sudden it'll just turn off and maybe it won't start up again. We would then say that your computer has bit the dust or if it's still working now, you could say, my computer is going to bite the dust. The other English phrase I wanted to teach you is the English phrase to let the dust settle. Sometimes you have an argument or a fight with someone and instead of going to them right afterwards and trying to apologize, Sometimes you wait a little bit. Sometimes it's important to let the dust settle. In English, when we say let the dust settle, it means that you just wait a little bit before you try to fix something. You wait a little bit before you go and try to make something better. Um, when two countries fight against each other and when they want to make peace, sometimes it's important to stop fighting and to just wait a little while before you start to talk with each other because it's important to just let the dust settle. So to review, when something bites the dust, when you say my car is going to bite the dust, it means that your car is going to stop working. It means it's going to die. And when you say that you want to let the dust settle, it means you want to just take some time before fixing something that was wrong with another person or even with another country. Hey, let's look at a comment from another video. Uh, this comment is from the video the other day and it is from Nazrin. And Nazrin says, Hi Bob, thanks for the lesson. It is so good that you gave us an example in context from your real life about the flowers. And my response was, real life is the best source for learning. So thank you Nazrin for that comment. Yeah, I talked about uh, how Jen and I dodged a bullet the other day. Um, in yesterday's lesson when the at night it got only a little bit cold and not really cold so the flowers are still alive um, and I use an example from my life and I use the phrase in context um, when you use something in context it means you use it as you would normally use it in a real life discussion or conversation and um, I like to teach that way as you know from watching all of my videos um, I am most often outside a lot of times I will go somewhere to teach a lesson because I like to teach all of my lessons in context. If I'm going to show you a restaurant, I might as well go to a restaurant. If I'm going to talk about travel and tourism, I might as well go to Niagara Falls. It's really fun for me to get out and to just do the videos as you would, to teach you the English in the location where you would need to use it. So I like to teach things in context. So again, thanks for that comment. That was great. Hey, um, it's Thursday evening here. It's probably Friday for you. This video comes out on a Friday morning uh, and I'm just happy that it's Friday. You know, Friday is a great day. You work really hard all week. You work really hard on Friday as well. But then at the end of the day, Hopefully for you, I know it is for me, it will be the weekend. And I love the weekend. It is so nice to work hard and then take a break and just relax for a little bit. Now I know I do a live stream on Saturday mornings. That's not quite like work. That's actually kind of fun. Um, but it certainly is nice to have two days a week where I am able to just relax a little bit and recharge my batteries so that when I go to work on Monday morning, I'm just ready to go and full of energy.